Hey, it's Mark. I'm going to get started here because I've got a lot of stock to talk about. It's like a lot of stuff to move in today. I'm not totally convinced yet on the Russell 2000 breakout, if it's going to hold or not. Because we've seen, we've seen it come up a lot, you know, and uh, come back down. Like, it'll go, it'll, you know, look like it's going to break out and then come back down. But I would see, I'm seeing a lot of stocks that are actually you know, showing a lot, of, a lot of bullish signs for the economy still, like, like I just put on my Twitter about the, um, the, the Akko brands, and that one, that one's kind of been a chronic, chronic underperformer, and a uh, pretty cyclical stock, because they, they primarily sell, you know, office products, and accessories, and office supplies, stuff like that, so it's, you know, if companies aren't spending, they're not buying that stuff, so, in other words, it's actually more of an indicator of like new, more, new offices, and you know, if people need to buy more supply, more and more supplies, you know. So the the Russell two thousand, you know, it's poking above that 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 trend line, that, that channel line that that was resistance back in twenty twenty two. So it went through some of the levels from twenty twenty three, but we'll see whether or not you know it holds. Uh, yeah, there wasn't a crazy amount of quality stocks up today. I got my scans. I just found a bunch of, uh, you know, there's a bunch of like uh, crappy, com crappy kind of companies. You know, like the short sellers had a, a good day today too. Because you look at the the stocks that were up the most today, like uh, the BMR was, you know, the trading stock and MGI and MGIH. Um, Let's say the BOF actually held up. I think that one had that one actually had some good news. Like I had I had the opportunity to to look at the screens a lot today and um, check out the Discord that I like. The uh, it's like the Noromac New Old Discord. It's uh it's got a lot of traders in there, and it's usually small caps and a lot of the stuff they trade is not even worth it. But but um yeah, it's not. I'm not like super convinced yet if the Russell's gonna hold. I mean, it just I mean, it just has to hold. It's gonna have to hold above that level for like a week or so. So we're not there yet, but but uh, I found the NA. Like I had the the NA was on my watch list, and uh, I was looking at it, and it was up like twenty thirty percent, and then it went up like. Then I tweeted it out and it went up like another 100 percent or it was up like 300 percent i think at one time it was just insane yeah it was up over like uh about 300 percent or so <laughs> but so that made me think of some other ones because a lot of these small caps the small caps that have that have found support and then those are the ones that are that are, that are running right now so like uh like the DNA I talked about yesterday or the day before, that one found support, you know, a long support level from way back, and it it moved off of that too. And DNA actually, DNA hit my momentum scan today. It's huge momentum today, and it looks like it's gonna really test for that level again. And. Uh, so that, that made me think of some of those small caps. Like I just kind of looked at, because I got a watch list of a lot of small caps, and uh, so I've got these. I'm watching these again. So the Mark Forge. This is a 3D printer, like 3D printing company. So it's actually probably even better than a lot of the companies that are moving now. And yeah, it has it. It found support from November, like a really good support level, and it's held it really well. So it actually just kind of broke that down channel. So I wouldn't, I wouldn't be surprised if this one has another, like a move up to like 90 cents or, you know, 80 cents. Like I'm not, I'm not holding my breath, you know, like uh, cause this, this thing, this thing's never really gotten much of a, um, much momentum for long in a while, but. You know, if all these small caps keep moving, this one, I wouldn't be surprised if this one goes too. Like I was saying, it's kind of a better one. You know, 
it's actually, they actually have some fundamentals and you know um, some growth and uh, I was looking at some other you know like I was looking at a lot of miners today and I found a couple you know thanks to some other um, people on Twitter and I found another ETF this one I, I had on my watch list the WGMI was really good today too it was actually up 10% they probably have different um, weightings, some of the holdings. And like the other ETFs are like DAPP and um, the BITQ. But the WGMI was up almost 11% today for on the close. And the CIFR, I think I I said that in yesterday's video that CIFR was one of my... Um, higher conviction ones just based on the fact that it could squeeze like you know if these small caps are going minor you know it doesn't matter like, the fundamentals don't matter as much as the short interest or you know it's like the sometimes the um just the thing that matters the most whether or not how much it can move is how much it's shorted so that's what you see in these kind of rallies you know, whether or not it's sustained or not, like I'm not sure these are going to be sustained and in, in the equities, but the Bitcoin, um, the Bitcoin looks legit. You know, the moving Bitcoin. So we may that may have been just like a low on these. A lot of these miners might um, really start ripping now, like a uh, riot. Riot's a good one. Uh, you know, more of a larger one but you look at the way that the volume has been pretty big there and the the way these things are moving they're uh it's like a lot of gap ups and looks pretty bullish but we'll see i'm pretty bullish on bitcoin going into the the halving because the historically it's done really well um went off of the hal halvings and that's coming up like uh I believe it's like April, but it's in the springtime for sure. It's um, it's it's only months. It's just a few months away. So, and it's just uh, some weird stuff too. Like like on on Joe Biden's Joe Biden's Twitter account, they put out the red eyes, like the the Bitcoin. It's so weird. Like I was like, it's almost like they're pumping Bitcoin, like the. I'm gonna pull that up because it's kind of interesting. Because I think you know Bitcoin, a lot of the move in Bitcoin is retail or has been, and the you know retail, of course, we know it runs on like a lot of social media and you know word of mouth. You know, it's less like um, research reports and stuff that's gonna get people to buy Bitcoin. You know, um, I was gonna pull up Joe Biden's. Twitter account because it's pretty it's pretty crazy like the it's almost like um well because when when Trump was president there was a lot of Trump stocks you know and um I was actually in one of them when it pumped off of the Trump a Trump tweet I was in um the auto company the automobile company um like in the Midwest or whatever like when Trump said like uh I think he actually tweeted the ticker out. Yeah, he tweeted the ticker. I missed, I mean, I missed a lot of those, like a lot of those Trump tweets I missed, but that was like amazing time to trade because cause, um, Trump was tweeting like tickers as far as I remember correctly. But yeah, this Joe Biden thing's interesting. Like um, people, I think a lot of people don't realize how much the news media and talking heads can influence stocks and assets like because Bitcoin's almost like a, you know, stock in the way that retail can move it. So, like CNBC has been known to have, um, to inadvertently pump stocks. So, uh, where is the drip? Yeah. So, yeah, it's this t this tweet here. Like, and this is Joe. This is Joe Biden's actual. Joe, the Joe Biden Twitter account, you know, um, and uh, 
we got this post, you know, it was like, I think it was during the Super Bowl or after it. I think it was like, yeah, I think it was during it. And, um, you know, that's the Bitcoin uh, signal there. So, yeah, this is the, par like, everybody thought it was like a parody or something, but, and the crazy thing is it's still up there, you know, like, like, there's been a lot of hacks on Twitter and, you know, or, or supposed hacks and, you know, this stuff, like, it's kind of common, you know, to see like a, like a hack and then, like, they, the SEC was hacked and stuff and like, but, uh, yeah, this is really unusual, I guess. I guess since they don't do the, the companies as much as like Trump did, they do the Bitcoin, but I don't know the motivation on it, but I mean, if you look at the price of Bitcoin today, it, it's almost like it could have reacted, but Bitcoin was already trending up, but it just seems like it could have added on to that for sure. Like, I mean, it can only be bullish, like, uh, It's kind of like, you know, the people that are anti, people that are, like, I'm not, like, super, I'm not, like, a, a Mac, Bitcoin Maxi or anything, or, like, I'm pretty neutral on it, you know, um, it just is what it is, and, but some, the people that hate it, you know, they probably don't like that, because that looks like a pump to me, like, uh, so, uh, it's just, that's kind of crazy, really, but, So yeah, so some of these, yeah, the Bitcoin miners, yeah, it's like, you pretty much just take your pick and they all pretty much trade the same. Like, uh, that's my list. You know, of course I got the CFR, the Wolf at the top, um, any, I mean, any calls. And uh, I found another one from Vivi's account, the CLSK. I don't know how I missed that one. I guess this is like really higher priced, maybe, I don't know, but. That one's just crazy, like this one, this Bitcoin miner, it's actually breaking out over um, the previous highs. It had, it had a ton of volume yesterday, wow, 89 million, traded 89 million shares yesterday. I don't know how I missed that one before, but I mean, there's just a lot of these. So that's, that's that sector. So just want to make sure I cover everything that I was, that I was looking at today. Like, yeah, that talk about the ACA brands. Yeah, even the regionals were up today, but it's still, it's not, it's not super convincing because that still looks like a double top right there. Cause you got a top there and there, and then you got this could be a, it could be a, just a bounce. It could be a bear flag. I mean, the way it looks, actually, it is like a bear flag. It looks like because the volume on the selling was really high, and it's just it's just got too many levels to break through. So that's kind of why I'm not super super positive that the Russell's going to hold above the highs. I mean, it very well may because there's like a lot of stuff, good stuff going on, but. Uh, We'll see, like, well, today the big thing was the RGTI, because I, I started talking about this, or I started, I kind of had it off my radar for a while, and then when it broke above that level there, back in uh, January, I did a Twitter post on that, and I put a post out saying, hey, we just broke above that down channel, and it's right on support, too, so, and that was the actual bottom on, uh, I think I actually, for, I tweeted about it there on that day, like the day before, so, you know, it's up a good bit since then, and then I noticed this bull flag here, I talked about that in the yesterday's video, and it reclaimed, like I thought it was going to do, it just reclaimed that, that level and just went a lot of volume today, I think that's the highest volume it's had in years, maybe, let's see. Well, because I was looking at 
Yeah, I talked about in my video yesterday, the, the quantum computing ETF QTUM was up too, so that one, that one had a good day to day too, and it kind of did what I thought it was going to do, just punched right through, kept going, because it was up again today, like the QTUM is actually at like 52 week highs now, it's actually it's like almost two year highs, <laughs> so, so yeah, that's kind of interesting, and like a lot of people I don't think expected that. But, uh, but yeah, back to the RGTI, so it's got, I'm just kind of looking to see how big that volume was today. What I say, we traded, we traded right at about 15 million shares, I mean 14.9. So 15 million shares traded, and that's pretty big for this stock, so let's see what it goes back. So we traded, yeah, we traded a lot of shares back in um, last year. Um, on that, on these pops, there it had like uh, the highest was eighty, about eighty million. But that could be, I mean, it, it could be a sign the volume today that there's that it's starting to come back in again because you know it traded fifteen million shares back, back on. Um, in June, before the before the biggest part of the run there, because it went from like a dollar to over three dollars, you know, after that after that volume spike. So back then it pulled back. So if we're to stay bullish, it's got to stay above this that channel level there. So this this red line here, it's got to stay above that. So I, I did buy some more calls um, in like March because I already had the Februarys that I bought like a while back, and I don't think those are, yeah those aren't gonna work out. But the um, the Marches look pretty good now, but it's still pretty speculative. I'm like I'm not I'm not you know hundred it's not this isn't like a high uh, super high probability setup, but the idea that it can go to like two bucks is, seems pretty high now though. So I'm gonna be watching Hood too, because Hood's got earnings tomorrow, and uh, I really like this stock as a as a as a as a company as like as a investment, because like I always say, they're gonna get bought out someday. Like it could be any day. <laughs> yeah, it's got it's got some levels there. So, yeah, oh yeah, the other one was the, um, the other major thing I want to talk about is the, um, these weed stocks or cannabis, like, they actually were down today when the, when a lot of stocks were up. So, the MSOS, it hit, it hit that level there, and I'm trying to see how good that level was. Yeah, that level was found back there and roughly there. So that former resistance was at about uh, about ten bucks, and then it got hung up again at ten bucks. Like you see, right at ten, it it failed, and uh, the momentum just broke. It actually broke two days ago. Like it got it got hung up there and uh, it's a pretty good pullback today so I actually like this as a short setup as more of a short setup than the short term because just the fact that it held it got held up there I just think it's highly unlikely that it goes back to the highs to like 1040 back uh, in like in a few days or in, in even less than a week so I mean in two weeks who knows but I think like weekly weekly puts look pretty good for it to hit like eight fifty or maybe even eight bucks. Let's see. Um, it's kind of a rough level right there at about um, seven sixty eight seven six seven sixties seven sixties are a good level. Like um, 
but even on, on runs, you know, it wouldn't be surprised. I wouldn't be surprised if it goes down about halfway from this run. So I think it could easily hit like eight bucks, like eight around eight to seven sixties. And then who knows, you know, it might go up um, because it does have some good fundamentals and prospects. But uh, but in the short term, I think it's going to go lower before it goes higher. So that's a good one. And the MSOS has weekly puts. So I, was, I might look at those because, like as I was saying, you know, the, it would be nice if tech had a pullback so that we can really sustain the rally, you know, over months and weeks. And uh, it's not good to see everything go up and up. Like, I really hope these semiconductors have a pullback because you can get like, you know, what you call a blow off top or like a, I call it a supernova where from Temp Sykes where they just go up and, you know, they get exhausted and then when the buy volume stops, you know, it just crashes. So, uh, so I think it'd be good for sentiment actually if we get a pullback. But I think the, I mean, we just gotta see what the earnings are like on the some of these semiconductors. Like, uh, but I, I really hope we get a pullback just to stay <laughs> to stay bullish if that makes any sense. So yeah, the Nasdaq's like. Um, It's like uh, kind of euphoric for the people that have been trading these, these gr this grind for like the past few couple of years. Like, uh, well, at least I mean the past like five years. Like 2022 was kind of tough. Was like really tough um, to figure out. But uh, yeah, it'd be nice to get a pullback here. I doubt. I mean, it might go another week or two, but. You know, we'll see what their earnings are like, and probably in my 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 gut is my hunch is it's probably going to keep going up. But um, it didn't even retest much. The other way, the retest was there; it went below. But uh, I found another one too. Like since he's, if if Nvidia runs tomorrow, I'm not exactly sure when Nvidia reports earnings. I guess that's kind of a big deal, but that might actually have some kind of uh, effect. I think uh, well, I guess uh, I guess I'll look at that later. But they've been beating like the last the last two earnings calls. They they beat earnings. And I really don't see how they have a bad quarter. I mean, there's no way there's going to be a bad quarter. It's probably, it's more likely to beat, really. Uh, yeah, it's like, it's going to be a while, probably. But we'll see, like, but the, but what I just want to talk about is this, this other stock, this SATX, because uh, this one, they're uh, a semiconductor and, um, it's kind of like these other small caps. They just they kind of found some support in the past week or two, and then it could it could pop because it has it has a history of pops. But this this kind of this is like a really like speculative one. But it hasn't moved you know much um, versus a lot of other semiconductors. So yeah, like SMH. It could easily pull back. I mean, it's up. Uh, that's a good measured move, like a move. Like you look at these moves it has before it pulls back, and it's pretty close percentage-wise. You know, that's all like algo trading and um, kind of just the nature of how you know bullish stocks trade. They do have pullbacks at some point. If that print today is. I actually read like that. Yeah, I think it could pull back. But it depends, you know, what the earnings are like. Um, Cause I imagine the Nvidia earnings would be important. Cause it's kind of like Nvidia's. Nvidia's got the finger on the pulse of, you know, all of tech right now, pretty much. So so. Uh, 
and uh, you know, I was thinking more. I was sometimes stuff's really obvious, like like if San, if the open a, open AI CEO wants to, you know, keep building you know data centers, <laughs> then uh, I'm sure a lot of other people are too, and you know, these data center infrastructure stocks should do well, you know, um, like everybody's looking at NVIDIA, but there's a lot of other stocks, like, like I'm, I'm hoping for a pullback in like NTNX, um, looks like it might be happening, uh, and the other killer ones at the VRTs, it's been killer, so maybe some of these, some of these, um, companies that are doing the infrastructure like the hardware and stuff will pull back like um mongodb or that was the i don't even know their ticker like i'm not the stock didn't do hasn't done as well as i was hoping you'd think it would do the uh, mdb well, yeah, there it is. Yeah, it finally came up again. Yeah, I looked at it back here. And it was just kind of like, looked like it died out. But, um, yeah, see, see, even MongoDB is up again. That's the level there. So, yeah, it just broke out of that level a few days ago. So yeah, like, I think I'm going to do a look again at some of these infrastructure stocks because uh, any kind of, any kind of IT hardware, like I don't see how they, they don't do well. You know, you can, you can pick and choose, you know, software companies, um, like my favorites, like Adobe and uh, Microsoft, but uh You know, whoever comes out with the best software doesn't really matter as much. You know, it's hard. It's hard to pick winners sometimes. You know, but there's definitely an appetite for the hardware. But like Adobe hasn't done much in the past few months. Um, So I'm just gonna go through, look at, see if, see if there's any other watch list that had some interesting things on them. Oh yeah, I was looking at the home builders. Yeah, the home builders finally broke out the um, home building ETF. We broke out, we held that breakout. So that's looking really bullish too. Looked bullish for, you know, it looks bullish for the, you know, breadth and you know, continuation. Like I was listening to some people talk about, you know, how important the breadth was and, you know, um, having all sectors go up, you know, it doesn't really matter like, uh, you know, in, 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 in the late nineties you had, you know, tech outperformed, but there's also a lot of, uh, you know, a lot of companies did get, you know, bid up from like uh, the retirement accounts. And so we'll see, like, I think what we're doing now is pretty good, you know, because we've got to get these rates lower. So, um, so there can be some more IPOs. Like I would like to see some AI IPOs and uh, then we'll, you won't know there's a bubble until the IPOs hit. Then, the, then you can start looking around for bubbles. But I think we're years from from a tech bubble. Like a, I, I think we're just getting started, really, um, with the infrastructure. Kind of like the '90s, where you had the the internet first started with infrastructure, and more and more companies started getting, you know. Um, like domains and dot coms and so the dot com boom didn't really 
go until you know 99 2000 and um that's when you know mark cuban sold the radio like mark 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 cuban made you know, as far as i know most of his wealth from that from that ipo or from that sale like it was uh i can't think of the name of it but it was like a radio company they're just like their idea was just to broadcast sports on the internet and that was like a novel that was like whoa that was like oh my god like sports on the internet so like wow we got to give that guy a billion dollars for that you know <laughs> it was like uh that was like peak hype um you know like the, the idea was just to put sports on the internet and that was like revolutionary or you know um at the time so so we're not there yet, you know, we're not close to that yet. Uh, <laughs> you know, when you see these small AI companies do startups, you know, or um, IPOs, then, you know, if like, uh, if Tesla spins off their their robot division and gives it like a trillion dollar valuation or something then you know then we'll be like at a we'll be at a bubble but we're not there yet and uh, that's just my experience because I've, I've seen the 90s tech bubble i was uh i was a teenager in the 90s i was like i used i used to use dial-up internet like in 95 96 we had a we had internet and uh I was like 15 or I was all, I was born in 81 so I was yeah, a teenager in the mid 90s and uh, I remember it very well like I wasn't following the market super close then but but I remember how long it took and you know what it looked like when um, it was in full swing and uh, it took Google a long time like even I mean, Yahoo was the first search engine, you know, like mass one um, in 95, they went, pub they went public with it. And then, but we used to use like Lycos and um, Alta Vista. And I think I used Lycos a lot. And then Google kind of came in late and, uh, but they even came late and they still did, you know, amazingly well. So, but we haven't even, Nobody's even created like an AGI uh, type uh, software yet, so at least perfect. So but we'll see. But yeah, the BYND is a watch too because it it broke the down channel, so there's a good chance that it just keeps breaking out once it once it does that. So you look at the past, you know, when it breaks these down channels, it has runs. Like it broke a down channel there. So it broke that down channel there and then it went from like 10 bucks to 20 bucks or 19 bucks. And then it broke a down channel there and it went from, you know, like six to 10. So it just broke a down channel here right now. So maybe it'll go to 10 again. Um, that just seems to be what it could easily do if, if the small caps continue, and these we get these these um these crappy companies start going up, they're shorted. So there's probably a good chance it does actually, you know, because it's it's very highly shorted. But we'll see though. Like I'm not sure. Like I'm gonna say, I'm not convinced in the Russell yet. Like I want to see. I mean, I want to see um. We'll, like IWM has got to be over like 206 for a while. So, but it's cool though too, like even if it goes down, you know, it's fine. Cause it'd be a lot of good shorts. Like, uh, I think the Peloton could be a good short if, uh, like if we get another day or two up in Peloton, like I might put some puts on that one because I don't see how it's going to reclaim that, you know, 
the closer it gets to like 560, the better for puts. So my hunch is that's a bear flag. So the best thing to do is just wait for it to break that, break down below that line. But uh, yeah, that's pretty much it. So that was a, that was probably a crazy long rant I was on. But yeah, the yes, things are coming together here with with these markets, with the equity markets, and. I've been tracking like international markets too, so like, so I don't have time to talk about those here, but I'll probably look and see what those did today, because the, the international markets haven't been as strong as you'd like to see with the uh, U.S. markets, but I guess it doesn't really matter in the short term, because there's a lot of conflicts and stuff going on. But the Vietnam, the Vietnam keeps holding that trend line, that long-term line. So yeah, Asia was super strong for a long time there, and then just kind of faded out. And the the thing about China is the the Dan I, Dan Ives, the tech analyst, he says that the Apple sales are pretty strong in China, and. Uh, I don't know what that means for the economy, but I mean, because they might be strong even in a weak economy, but um, I kind of doubt it. But I think there's just better setups in the US stocks still. Like, uh, I kind of get burned every time I try to pick a side, pick a trade in FXI or K Web. But it does look short term bullish, like it's got kind of like a pennant there. But who knows, you know. So, yeah, I'll just, I'll just call it a wrap because I talked about a lot of stuff and uh, uh, catch you in the next one.